Now, Professor Lawrence Muchibi was awarded Doctor of Philosophy, and of course, it does explain his title of Professor. But before the titles to your name, you're a person, a human being. Now, that's the person we are digesting on People and Power tonight. Lawrence Muchibi studied at St. Leo's Butenga Primary School in Masaka and later St. Bernard College, Chisweda, for his secondary level. Muchibi studied a Bachelor of Arts degree and diploma in education at Makere University. Muchibi's first taste of administration began when he moved to Kenya for duties as head teacher at a Fraha High School that honed his school management. He returned to Uganda to assume more ladders as headmaster of Kampala Parents Primary School for three years and he was quickly ascending the castle to the top. After going through the tests in practice and administration, he finally crosses the bridge towards the dream. Muchibi's first baby was St. Lawrence Citizens High School, Kabaka's Lake, formerly original Progressive High School, that began the long road to the empire now. Here the tales of the roots are endless. Should we all imagine that um, Kabaka's Lake now, which was the first St. Lawrence, mm. had made enough profits for you to build another school? You see, when we, in terms of education, we don't make profit. Yeah, because... What? We don't make profit, we make sacrifice. Mm -hmm. If anybody talks of profit in the education field, that man cannot go far. Because in schools you can never make profit. But right now you, 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 you <laughs> That's the language people would like to use. Okay. You, you make a sacrifice mm -hmm. and uh, the little money you have saved here and there, you mm -hmm. may call it profit, but it's not profit. Mm -hmm. The word profit, we, we don't like it. Okay, what do you call it then? We call it sacrifice, surplus. <laughs> we, we don't want some little saving here okay, and there. Yeah. And with the cooperation of parents. Because mm. you can ask parents. I'm sure when you came, we were still asking for cement, what not. What yes, not. you are. Yes. So you know cement anymore, those things? No. So, Creamland was built. And uh, the banks that time would bend a little bit. And mm. he said, please, give me a loan, mm -hmm. put up this building. Okay. Quimland, uh, gave me a loan, a very small loan, but that time big, of uh, 25 million. That was enough for me to improvise and go ahead. Okay. Then in 99, I built uh, Horizon Campus. Your favorite campus. Horizon Campus. <laughs> Why Horizon? I mm -hmm. had uh, looked at... Well, my stay in Kenya, I had looked at schools, um, mixed schools and girls schools. Mm -hmm. I had found out that girls in mixed schools don't perform as well as those in single, single girls schools. schools. That's why I wanted to experiment further. Even at Camp Parents when I was there, and those little ones, I could see the falls were three quarters of the falls were with the boys. Only the girls would get only one quarter of the falls. And yet, the class in terms of population, in terms of numbers, was balancing. Okay. So that proved to me that girls can do better in secondary school when they are on their own rather than mixing them with the boys. But some parents say, no, I want my girl to study with the boys so that he can, uh, you know, compete with them. Well, we have the, op the option. Okay. One who wants a mixed school, we have them. We one who wants a girls' school, some parents like girls. That's why Horizon is very popular to those parents who like. I'm sure even your parents were in for a girls' school. So, that's how I started um, Horizon. The hard way, really things were hard. But then, if I take you back on the kind of imagination you had of the kind of school you wanted to own or mm. create, mm. and even the kind of student mm. or product mm. that you wanted to create. Yeah, to start with, I wanted, um, first and foremost, well-behaved students. Okay. 
I could not get the brain ones to start with. I mm -hmm. couldn't. No one would count me with the 405. <laughs> no one would count my S5 with the aggregate 188. Mm -hmm. These days they can come. So I knew I would reach there. And now I'm about there. But I wanted the students who are well behaved. Who probably, if they went out of my school or schools, would be, would try to shape or to be examples of well behaved people in Uganda. I had in mind students who are hygienically sound. Mm -hmm. Sound, they are smart, they are clean. Living in a clean environment as you see it, living in clean dormitories. I believed that education is not all about academics. Academics is number one, of course, mm -hmm. but academics alone, when one does not have these other attributes, like discipline, like words of courtesy, like cleanliness, like hygiene, like social interaction, positive social interaction with the people. That academic life may <laughs> be good or right. You, you can sound in papers like we do these days, but uh, it will not have brought up a wholesome, educated person who can fit in society comfortably and is admired. During the time, it was many people were actually against the way you had transformed the way people look at schools. For example, allowing students to dance in the night and all those things. And St. Lawrence was always associated with things that other school students couldn't do. Where did you get those ideas? You get those ideas, especially when you are traveled. <laughs> when you are traveled, you are exposed. Mm -hmm. Many people have not traveled. And then discover that it doesn't do harm to and the students in any way. Harm. I'll tell you a scenario and other scenarios. Mm -hmm. I went, we went to Australia. Went to Australia for a conference, mm -hmm. a teacher's conference. Mm -hmm. In Uganda, there were about four or five who could make it to Australia. Mm -hmm. In the whole of Africa, we were about 20 who went to Australia. Now, these are international conferences organized by people who have been in this field for. We had a speaker, a facilitator from America. She was talking about technology of phones. Mm -hmm. The man talked about these phones so much, but I'll bring out one aspect. So there's no harm a student being with a the phone. There's no harm because it helps him to do what to Google, to do what to do what, all those functions as we know them. A phone is a facility that helps the student to study. A phone is a facility that helps the student to communicate, to learn the art of communication, and all those things. Do you know we Africans, we looked at ourselves, <laughs> <laughs> and we laughed, we said, for us, is crazy. for us, if we find a student <laughs> with a phone, out of the school, <laughs> expansion out of the school, you must not have a phone. Hey, we said, what is this? Now, when we are on our own, we said, for us, when we go back, <laughs> We shall not tell our students to be with the phones. <laughs> and indeed, even now, we don't encourage them to be with the phones. So, <laughs> that is lack of exposure. Okay. I will tell you another scenario. <laughs> when you are in primary school, <laughs> primary school, okay. you are not allowed to wear shoes. All over Uganda in primary school, mm -hmm. at least where I was. How do you wear shoes? And the teacher is also wearing shoes. shoes. You will not understand what he's teaching. You will be thinking about your shoes. <laughs> so whether you are from a rich family or not, or you would not, have to leave the shoes. You back have to reach the shoes and you wear them on on Sunday. Okay. That's how. So I, for the whole of my primary school, the good thing is when my father probably could not afford the shoes for me. So. Well, you for me it was okay, but those who are from rich families. They would have to come barefooted. Barefooted. That's how it was. Mm. And that was the thinking of the time. So, 
when you say uh, people criticized me because I allowed the uh, girls to be with the hair, these days, you know those days, mm. hair would take a lot of time for girls. But these days, with the new technology, what not, uh, the hair relaxers, five minutes. Everything is done. Everything is done. So no time wasted on hair. Students must be happy when they are in school. In the UK, every school has a dancing hall. And this is, I learned from, can you imagine? I learned from my second father, Bernard Kakinda. We used to dance. Really? You yes. would do the salsas? We used to dance. That time there was a twisty, we would dance, twisty, we would dance, cha cha cha, and he would dance with us. And he was a staunch Catholic and an old man.